You know, I woke up this morning and I, f I forgot where I was for a minute. And I remembered last time I was here, I was doing a lot of complaining about the ridiculous prices of CDs down here. And that story got picked up and got carried all around the world and now my record label all around the world hates me because I yelled at them and called them out for being greedy fucking assholes. I didn't get a chance to check, has the price come down at all? I see a no, a no, a no, a no. Anybody, has, has anyone seen the price come down? Okay. Well, you know what that means. Steal it. Steal away. Steal and steal and steal some more and give it to all your friends and keep on stealing. Because one way or another, these motherfuckers are getting through their head that they're ripping people off and that's not right. I don't know if most people have seen long form contracts. They're insane, and there's all these little, these little things thrown in. It's kind of like legislating, you know, legislature for a government. They put up this big issue, but underneath that issue, there's like 17 other little laws that they threw in that they're not talking about. So when you say yes to this one thing, you're actually saying yes to like 45 other things. There's, there's a worse one. They used to have damage fees with digital downloads. Digital downloads, like at first they were doing that, like they just trying to get away with murder, you know, just like, let's leave it in there, let's see if the lawyer sees it kind of thing. Uh, I wasn't really taking large advances from the recording companies. I was recording the albums myself in my own studio. So the way I looked at it, I owned the work because I paid for it. And I did all the work, I created it, so I felt like it should belong to me. That said, the um, companies felt otherwise, and they would always hold this contract up and say, well, you signed it. And I say, well, I understand that. It's not like I want to leave. I just want to, you know, talk about this thing and see if we can't make it more fair. Of course, they wouldn't change because if they change, they wouldn't really exist. It shouldn't be a situation where they own the album or the work. It's a, we're talking about intellectual copyright. If they're going to be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship. The craziest rock and roll story... Uh is about you basically you move on you got a solo career going it's going well you got this song old man down the road and all of a sudden you're sued for ripping off run through the jungle which you obviously wrote and and arranged right. how did you make it through that well the um right just because so obviously you didn't, you, you didn't own the, the the rights to run through the jungle anymore and that's why they well, felt I like never that, owned it. that yeah. contract we signed was actually before i had written any of the songs so yeah. they came into being not in my ownership ever saul owned all the songs that i wrote during the credence era saul was suing me owning the old song and wanted to own my new song old man down the road um trying to claim that it was uh, the same song, and it, it was all BS, of course. Right. In my right. humble opinion, that that that's a bad person. He had to sue you over that. That that's and just the worst amazing. part of that was sitting in the courtroom when Saul was on the stand. Yeah, my lawyer asked him. Uh, isn't it true that this case is just a vendetta against John, and he doesn't even quite get the sentence finished? My my attorney asking Saul, and Saul says it's an answer to a vendetta. You know, you could just see the steam coming oh, out. His gosh. face turned red. My uh, my daughter went over to David Geffen's house, who I'm actually friends with. But uh, she said, why does he have so much money? And I felt like, you know, Bonfire of the Vanities. And I said, because people like me and your daddy bake him a big cake and then we get a few crumbs. And the statistician that's in my lawsuit has done over 9,000 audits of recording, you know. And it's all, you know, rich rock stars, my swimming pool is not as big as it. It's so not that. I mean, I'm talking about people. It's not about me. I have money. <sighs> but it's there is a duty that I have and that Don Henley has picked up as well in doing, which is there are so many people who, like, you know, bands that aren't cool, rat, fog hat, um, you know, things that um, are not groovy and cool, you know, the gin blossoms, and those people are going to, they can't afford lawyers, and they can't afford audits, and they're owed money to live, and, you know, they, they always want me to go on 60 Minutes or Diane Sawyer, and I'm like, why don't we find the people, ask 10 of your staff their favorite songs 10 years ago, and I'll show you nine destitute people who do not have health care. Yeah. And that's really, so if I can get this worked out with Universal, I still have a lobbyist in Sacramento. I have a, a great senator in California is going to push this bill through that will affect. 
One thing that did happen during the 60s was some music of an unusual or experimental nature did get recorded and did get released. Now look at who the executives were in those companies at those times. Not hip young guys. These were cigar chomping old guys who looked at the product that came and said, I don't know. Who knows what it is? Record it, stick it out of it, sells, all right. We were better off with those guys than we are now with the supposedly hip young executives. And he's saying, well, we can't take a chance on this because it's just simply, that's not what the kids really want and, I'm, and I know. You know, and they got that attitude. And the day you get rid of that attitude and get back to, who knows? Take a chance, you know, that, that entrepreneurial spirit where even if you don't like or understand what the record is that's coming in the door, the person who is in the executive chair may not be the final arbiter of taste of the entire population. It's just a misunderstanding that we're trying to sort out, that's all. Like, we, we took something differently than they say they meant it, so we're just going to see how they feel about it and move on from there. People blew it out of proportion, like, people were like, oh, well, this happened today, or this is being announced. It was never supposed to be announced. It, w it was public record. It's not a big deal. It's just like a, hey, we think this, they don't agree. So that's all it is. Like, regardless of where the record comes out, it comes out. Like, that's, that's, that's our main focus. We're just going to write music, play music, and we will have a new record out in 2012. So it doesn't really matter to us. Whatever happens, happens. This article in the Rolling Stone here, where uh, didn't this go on and on about whether or not the record's going to sell for nine ninety eight or eight ninety eight? Well, yeah. Why, why get involved with the pricing of albums? So many people don't understand why an artist would do. Lately, that. I asked myself this yes, question. Yes, why do that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was just too much money to to pay for a record. I thought. <laughs> um, uh, I used to buy albums when they were three dollars. Me too. You know, in mono, and uh, it wasn't as big a deal, I think, as the press has made it since. But all it was was just. Uh, well, in, in no, your view, you know, we didn't want to put it out for. What, what would have happened had they been able to sell your record, which I'm certain is going to be a, a, a major success, for nine ninety eight? I think you had the feeling that that would allow them to raise the prices of all the albums coming along. Absolutely. An extra dollar. It would have been a, a, a breach in the dike, so to speak. And they probably will, but. This was just very pleasing to me because it was one situation where the audience actually won an issue, mm -hmm. which I think uh, our record companies shouldn't, they should be applauded on one hand, I think, for being big enough to kind of bend to the public opinion because they, I didn't expect them to, quite honestly.